words in Chan Song Su UX and this is how powerful are America's different nuclear weapons by Chan Sandbox. Yeah, I've been watching this type of videos a lot from Sandbox and Task and Purpose. In recent video, I think for some Task and Purpose that I watched, and I got a lot of comments from people like uh, all these videos just hype up American weapons, this and that, and like, uh, you know, what about the nuclear weapons? Like, uh, their nuclear, you know, industry is like aging. They don't even know how to make nuclear weapons anymore because they forgot and this and that. And yeah, I've heard of that. I think I'm pretty sure I heard of that from John Oliver and things like that. Like, America apparently doesn't know how to make nuclear weapons or forgot how to make them. It kind of feels strange to me because America is the hub when it comes to like scientists and physicians, right? Uh, physicists, not physicists, physicists and like, uh, you know, scientists. And, uh, you know, I get it. Like, okay, if you don't keep track of something and obviously with like denuclearizing uh, movements and things, how certain steps could have been taken which like uh, it turned out like you know not just that nuclear you know nuclear missiles are aging but like uh, people don't even know how to make it again because I don't know certain restrictions were put on to not make nuclear weapons isn't that could happen something like that but America can figure out very fast that's the thing uh, making nuclear weapons is like really old tech in scientific term everything we can do today everything scientists can do today nuclear weapons is not even come close to like yeah i'm pretty sure there's gonna be like nuclear restriction which is going to restrict how new uh, america can create nukes right so this video is not about that this video is about like what current weapons are there right <clears throat> and nuclear when they say nuclear uh, technology is aging pretty sure they mean like uh, you know like uh, utilities around it not the actual weapon itself it's a nuke it will if it works it's gonna explode whatever megatons uh, output it can give right so i'm pretty sure it means the utilities and like the system that are in place right and yeah aging as in like nuclear weapons that you already have like you know they're degrading right over time you have to replace them and replacing is going to be issue but that issue hasn't arrived yet uh, weapons i'm pretty sure it works but, you know, America will be, you know, facing that issue in the future. Like, they have to replace them and to figure things out. So, right now, how many different type of weapons they have, that's the this video is about. So, let's watch it. So, how powerful are American nuclear weapons and how many different kinds are there? More than you might realize, the U.S. military currently maintains at least seven different classes of nuclear warheads, and at least five different delivery methods for those warheads, divided into bombs and missiles. So let's run through America's nuclear weapons, how they're delivered, and how powerful they are, starting with the B-61 class of bomb. Now these nuclear gravity bombs actually come in various iterations, all of which are being replaced by the B-61 TAC-12, which is a dial-a-yield weapon capable of producing a nuclear blast as small as just 0.3 kilotons, or as large as 340 kilotons, or about 17 times the destructive- People are gonna be pissed off about that, I bet. Why he used that particular city to show that, like, okay power of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Though it is worth noting that the U.S. recently announced the production of a new B-61 class nuclear gravity bomb, the B-61 TAC-13, with a 360 kiloton yield. Now these bombs can be delivered by the B-2 Spirit, as well as a variety of fighter aircraft, like the F-A-18 Super Hornet, at least at one point, the F-15E Strike Eagle, the F-16, and the F-35A. But believe it or not, America's... Yeah, F-35 one is kind of insane. Because all the ones are not stealthy, right? I mean, yes, Silent Eagle, like, sure, they're stealthy, but uh, those upgraded F-15 and F-16, they're trying to make it stealthy, sure. But F-35 is properly stealthy plane, and that can carry nuke. Yeah, that's a scary prospect, let's just say. Uh, that their you know, radar cross-section is insanely low. I know pe there are people who's gonna like, oh, pff, yeah, right. Uh, there are things like even Iran has technology that can detect F-35. I'm pretty sure I watched a video on that as well, like react to it. But yeah, detecting how fast, how quickly. If F-35 comes and drops the bomb and walks away and then you detect it, what's the point of that? So F-35 with a nuclear bomb is really, really threatening, right? And this bomb, this basic weapons are really small uh, compared to, uh, you know, like uh, World War II ones. 
right so that's the terrifying thing right uh but you know when i didn't know all this i'll just assume like okay nuclear bombs got bigger bigger czar bomba castle bravo and all that shit right czar bomba being the biggest that is right they could like make even more bigger than that uh but they stop after that like whoa that's too much like whole continent shook when that shit happened and i'm like i'm sure like they're gonna make bigger and bigger what i didn't thought of is they they're gonna make smaller and tactical one which is frightening small missile carrying a nuke and any basic plane like f-35 small planes can basically throw multiple tactical nukes that's of more frightening than one big nuke which basically this is so modern weapons are even more frightening because of that small size of it right a small multiple nukes is too terrifying biggest nuclear weapon is also a bomb the b-83 nuclear gravity bomb now this weapon has a maximum destructive capacity of 1.2 megatons or around 1200 kilotons and the primary means of delivery for these massive weapons is the b-2 spirit stealth bomber but that's not the only way american aircraft can deliver nuclear armageddon because the b-52 stratofortress is also equipped to deploy agm 86b nuclear air launched cruise missiles happy yeah, 52 stratofortress can throw out anything it wants you can throw out even like a fucking what is it like a metal anchor from popeye and cartoons you can even throw that shit why not which each carry a w80 nuclear warhead on board with a maximum destructive yield of around 150 kilotons and these missiles have a range of more than 1500 miles allowing the b-52 to launch them from well outside what? the reach of enemy air defenses or even combat air patrols oh that shit is terrifying a thousand mile distance this missiles can do and you just like throw it like okay goodbye from this shit so they can just deploy this from atlantic and fuck off back to america and there you go some country in like europe and, and basically something like that is just completely screwed thousand kilometers thousand thousand miles right thousand miles that's insane doesn't matter thousand kilometers, thousand miles so that's a long ass distance right so yeah, obviously America have weapons, have missiles that have that kind of like reach, but I know they have nuclear missiles like that that can do that. That's insane. And that just about does it for the airborne leg of the nuclear triad. So now let's move on to the U.S. Navy's Ohio-class ballistic missile submarines, which oh, actually represent the majority of America's deployed nuclear firepower. Now, the U.S. Navy operates 14 Ohio-class boomers, as they're called, that carry nuclear weapons. Each is capable of carrying as many as 24 Trident II submarine-launched ballistic missiles, though they actually usually only carry 20. And each of those 20 Trident II SLBMs is capable of carrying up to eight W76 100 kiloton warheads or eight W88 455 kiloton warheads, each in its own multiple independent reentry vehicle, allowing them to engage. I saw a video, I don't know if it was like a video game video or like a, you know, the cinematic videos or what. But I saw ICBM basically going out of space. That's how ICBMs work. It's a ballistic missile. It has to re-enter the atmosphere at like a ballistic speed, like how bullet works. And I saw a missile going out and it just spraying like flak cannon type of way, like spraying multiple warhead, which basically chase itself and then explodes on ever. But it's from a video game or something. I don't know if it was from Metro or something. I don't know, what the fuck? But then I realized, wait a minute, that's not some bullshit or futuristic shit. That can happen now. This basically right one missile goes up and during re-entry it deploys multiple like a shotgun or something nuclear shotgun that's what you need and there you go it, nothing will left alive on this planet i believe that now right before i'm like okay a nuke can d destroy a city this and that like knowing the geography what is a city right it's like basically there's a reason why asteroid every time asteroid falls no city gets destroyed because cities are really small in you know scattered around in a big ass plane that is our earth right but this kind of shotgun nukes yeah everything will be nuked that's what i'm believing like every time people like oh by the way few thousands of nukes were launched few thousands of missiles from china russia and usa all three of them said fuck it everything will be destroyed i believe that separate targets 
And believe it or not, even that is a reduction because these Trident IIs used to be able to carry up to 12 separate warheads apiece. And what that means is a single Ohio-class ballistic missile submarine regularly carries enough warheads to be considered the eighth largest nuclear power in the world all on its own, and is capable of carrying enough warheads to be the fifth or sixth largest nuclear power if the U.S. ever decided to go ham with its Trident IIs. And then, of course, we have the land-based leg of America's nuclear triad, represented by some 400 Minuteman III intercontinental ballistic missiles, each with a range of over 8,000 miles and the ability to carry as many as three separate 350 kiloton warheads. Though it appears all of America... Okay, is it just me or like the ground base is the most terrifying? Why is that? Is that because that's what we think of when we think of nukes? Like a missile silo opening up from the ground, launching like, oh, the humanity. Because everything else looks cool. Oh, submarine, that's cool. Plane dropping a bomb, oh, that's cool. Or ground opening up and missile launching, that feels more terrifying, I don't know why. America's deployed Minuteman 3s are equipped with only a single 475 kiloton warhead. All told, the U.S. nuclear arsenal includes some 5,224 separate nuclear warheads, though the U.S. only has around 1,770 deployed at any given time, with the rest stockpiled in case of a rainy day. And if America's biggest nuclear weapon, the 1.2 megaton B-83 nuclear gravity bomb, seems awfully powerful to you, you should know that... Russia's latest intercontinental ballistic missile, the RS-28 Sarmat, has a disclosed maximum yield of 50 megatons, or about 100... Okay, let, what, what the fuck? Uh, so America and basic... America stopped making big bombs. Castle Bravo, which was like, what, 30, 40 mega... I don't even know the numbers. 50 megatons, that's... I'm pretty sure that's Zar Bomba, right? So Russia made a bomb that is equivalent to Zar Bomba again. And America can't make it, like, what, America has to follow rules? Or, like, when Russia made it, America didn't even think of making it, and now they don't know how to make it, so it's going to take time. Is that what's happening? Russia has a bomb with 50, basically a Tsar Bomba. That's what Russia has, right? Or am I mis mistaking? I'm pretty sure 50 megaton, that's Tsar Bomba, right? Because I remember that, like, the yield is supposed to be, like, two or three times as high, but it, it, didn't, it didn't happen, so it's just 50 megatons. I'm pretty sure that was a 50 megatons is like insanely high, right? So 50 megatons, but basically if Russia has more Tsar bombas. This is just insane, man. Imagine that, like nuclear war breaks out and Russia wins because Russia has 50 megaton bombs and America doesn't. Um, okay, that wouldn't happen because like a, there's a spray thing, right? Uh, you know, shotgun nukes, it doesn't matter how much, uh, if 50 of the one megaton is going to have equivalent damage, if not more. But let's just say like if Russia wins 50 megaton bomb. All those people, all those activists, they say, oh, nuke is bad, man, war bad. Now, only reason Russia even thinks about launching it because Russia knows it's had bigger bombs. How fucked up that would be. In order to try to save the world, you'd remove the deterrent, and now everything's fucked. Imagine if that happens, right? Uh, only thing I can think of, like, even if that happens, every people who, like, protest is going to be dead anyway, so nobody's going to care or know. There you go. 102 times the destructive power of an American Minuteman Three ICBM. Talk about some Bond villain stuff. Yeah, that's insane. But yeah, you have one mega, 150 megaton bomb or you have 51 megaton bomb. I think 51 megaton bomb are more scary because like you can target it where you want maximum damage. But yeah, it depends how many 50 megaton bombs Russia has, right? Yeah, people right now because of the war, people think like Russia's equipment is not working. But what if one thing they're working is nukes? Yeah, let's, let's hope that doesn't happen. Otherwise, there could be a time where Russia's like, oh yeah, yo, you want to test me? Okay, here's a nuke. And th that's how I've been bitching about for the past few months. Once one nuke get launched, any nukes can get launched, right? Either it could be mutual destruction and everybody dies, or just only some people die and it just becomes a thing, like you, you launch nukes sometime, which is, I guess, even more terrifying. Slow death, right? I don't know. When it's nukes are involved, like everything just gonna be bad. There's a, only deterrent part is good. Everything else is just horrible. All right, well, if you like, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.